So speaking of which, let's talk about love. Yes. <laughs> which requires to be receptive of the world. Yes. Of strangers. Agreed. How do we put more love out there in the world, especially on the internet? One mechanism I have found to pr- um, increase love, and that's a word that has many meanings and is you know used in a very intense sense and it's used in a very loose sense. Can you try to define love? Sure. Love is a strong sense of attraction toward a another person, entity, or place that causes one to tend to react in a disproportionately positive manner. That's off the top of my head. Disproportionately? Yes. Hmm. So for example, if you- Why not proportionally? Because like, if you're someone's about to, who you love is about to get harmed, you're moving heaven and earth to make sure, uh, or like a book you love, you know, like I love this book, like you're going through the fire to try to save it. Whereas if it's a book you really like, it's like, oh, I'll get another one. It, I don't, you know, uh, and a book's a, kind of a loose example, but- So you're going with a love that's like, you're saving for just a few people, almost like romantic, love, like love for a close family. But it's also- But what about like, just love to even the broader, like the kind of love you can put out to people on the internet, which is like just kindness. Sure, I would say in that case, it's important to make them feel uh, um, seen and validated. And I try to do this when people who I have come to know on the internet, and there's a lot, uh, I try to do that as much as possible because I don't think it's valid how on social media, and I do this a lot myself, but not towards everyone, it's just there to be aggressive and antagonistic. You should be antagonistic towards bad people, and that's fine. But at the same time, there's lots of great people. And especially with my audience, and I would bet disproportionately with yours, there's a lots of people who are, because of their psychology and intelligence, are going to be much more isolated socially than they should. And if I, and I've heard from many of them, and if I'm the person who makes them feel, oh, I'm not crazy, it's everyone else around me who is just basic, uh, the fact that I can be that person, which I didn't have at their age, to me is incredibly reaffirming. You mean that source of love? But I mean, love in the sense of like, you know, you care about this person and you want good things for them, not in a kind of romantic way. But I mean, you're using it in a broad sense now. Yeah, but you're also a person who kind of, I mean, uh, attacks the power structures in the world by mocking them yes. effectively. Yes. And uh, love, I would say, requires you to be non-witty and simple and fragile which I see it as like the opposite of what trolls do. Trolls are, if I, if there is someone coming after what I love, there's two mechanisms, right? At least two. I go up and I'm fighting them. And in which case you, you bring in, if you are getting hurt in a knife fight, even if you win the knife fight, or if you disarm them and you preclude the possibility of a fight and you drive them off or render them powerless, you can you keep your person intact uh, as yourself, and you also protect your values. Uh, so how do you render them powerless? As you just said, by mocking them. One of the m- most effective mechanisms for those in power, we're much closer to Brave New World than 1984. The people who are dominant and in power aren't there because of the threat of you know, the gulag or prison. They're there because of social pressures. Look at the masks. Uh, I was on the subway not that long ago in New York City. Um, no one cared who I was until I put off the mask. I was in the subway that nice. long in New York City. There was, and I put this on my Instagram. I've told this story before. There was an Asian dude in his early 30s. He was like in Western clothes. It's not like he had a rickshaw or something. An older man in his 50s stood up over him on the subway, screamed at him, said, go back where you came from. You're disgusting. I'm going to get sick. If you think this guy is a vector of disease, which is your prerogative, why are you coming close to him? Why are you getting in his face? And what- oh, so That was a rate, sorry. So it was because he, he was- Asian? It was both. It was it, it, the not having a mask felt, gave him the permission to act like a despicable, right. aggressive person toward him, right? And the point being, uh, a lot of these mechanisms for social control are outsourced to low quality people because this is their one chance to assert dominance and status over somebody else. So the best way to diffuse that isn't with weaponry or fighting, it's through mockery, because all of a sudden their claims to authority are effectively destroyed. So let me push back on that. What about fighting that with with love, with um, 
patience and like kindness towards them. I, I don't think kindness is, I think that would be uh, uh, a mismatch and inappropriate. There's Superman, there's Batman, okay? And Superman's job is to help the good people and Batman's job is to hurt the bad people. And I will always be on a Batman side than a Superman side. Both work uh, silly tight costumes. One has uh, pointy ears. Both are ridiculous. So it's uh... one's a billionaire who gets you know he he's swimming in trim. Which one is a billionaire? Batman? Okay, yeah. I'm I, I'm undereducated on the, okay on the superhero movies. I apologize. Okay, but but you're just saying you your predisposition is to be on the Batman side is to uh, fighting the bad guys. Yeah, I suppose. and that's what I'm good at. That's what you're good at. But what, just to play devil's advocate, or actually, in this case, I am the devil because that's what I usually do. Well, I'm is, the devil. You're the, you're the angel's advocate. You're exactly. I'm, for love. To be the, <laughs> to be <laughs> the <laughs> angel advocate, yeah. It's like, I feel like mockery is, um, is, a, is a path towards escalation of conflict. Yes, in many ways, yes. So you're not, I mean... It's kind of like guerrilla warfare. I mean, yes. you're not going to win. I am winning. We're all winning. We're winning on a daily. This is my next book. We're winning. We've won before. I'm not joking. The ne the topic of the next book. Yes, is the white pill. The white pill. Is that we're going to, we are winning. The most horrible people are being rendered into laughing stocks on a daily basis in social media. This is, oh, this is a good. glorious I thing. I so disagree with you. I disagree with you because there's side effects that are very destructive. It feels like you're, you're winning, but we're completely destroying the possibility of having um, like a cohesive society. That's called oncology. What's that mean? Curing cancer. No, I, yeah. Your concept of a cohesive society is in fact a, a society based on oppression and not allowing individuals to live their personal freedom. Oh, so... You're, you're a utopian view of the you're world. You're the utopian. You're saying cohesive society. I'm yeah. saying I don't need that. I'm saying there's going to be conflict. Freedom. Right, there's going to be conflict. You and I are disagreeing right now. That's not cohesive. Doesn't mean we like each other less. Doesn't mean we respect each other less. Cohesive doesn't, it's, it's, it's just a euphemism for like everyone submitting to what I want. No, I mean, co cohesive could, could, uh, could be that. It could be, um, it could be like enforced with violence, all that kind of stuff, sort of the, uh, the libertarian view of the world, but it could just be being respectful and kind of each other uh, uh, and kind towards each other and loving towards each other. I mean, that's what I mean by cohesive. So when people say free, it's, it's funny, like freedom is a funny thing because freedom can be painful to a lot of people. Um, it's, it's it's all matters how you define it, how you implement it, how it actually looks like. Sure. And I'm just saying, it feels like the mockery of the powerful leads to further and further the divisions. It's like the, it's turning life into a game, to where it's always you're playing, you're you're creating these different little tribes and groups, and you're constantly. Uh, fighting the groups that become a little bit more powerful by undercutting them through guerrilla warfare kind of thing. And that's what the internet becomes is everyone's just mocking each other. And then certain groups become more and more powerful. And then they start fighting each other in, into base, they, they form groups of ideologies and they start fighting each other in the internet where the result is, it doesn't feel like the common humanity is highlighted. It doesn't feel like that's a path of progress. Now, like when I say cohesive, I don't mean like everybody has to be, you know, enforcing equality, all those kinds of ideas. I just mean like not being so divisive. That's like, so it's going back to the original question of like, how do we put more love out in the world on the internet? I, I want divisiveness. You, I, oh, you see, so you think that yes, this is that's the that, goal. That's very interesting. It's the goal. So you we started this conversation by you talking about you have love for that small group. Uh, I think we both would agree to have a bigger group would be better, especially if that love comes from a sincere place. Um, I think 
our country specific. I wrote an article about this four years ago that it's time to disunite the states and to secede. This country has been held together with at least two separate cultures with dumb text and string for over 20 years. Uh, there's an enormous amount of contempt from one group toward another. Uh, this contempt comes from sincere place. They do not share each other's values. There's absolutely no reason, just like any unhealthy relationship where you can't say, you know what, it's not working out. I wanna go my own way and live my happiness. And I genuinely want you to go your way, live your happiness. If I'm wrong, prove me wrong. I'll learn from you and, and take lessons and vice versa. But the fact that we all have to be in the same house together is not coherent and that's not love. That is the path towards friction and tension and oh, conflict. Interesting. 